function, okay? You also have deep brain stimulation for, for you know, some, something like Parkinson patients and, you know, to help stop um, hand tremors, uh, to help with stroke, to, to help with OCD. So we currently have uh, a, a set of very crude and yet very life-changing brain-machine interfaces in the world, okay? And the idea, they're all the same idea. It's how do you either record information that the neurons are saying, basically capture what they're saying and send it out, or stimulate neurons. In other words, send information in, all right? So this is the starting point. This is when Elon gets involved. And when he looks at the match that needs to ignite the industry, he says, okay, well, we're here. This is the first computer. This is what these will all look like. This is the era we're in right now with brain machine interfaces. We have the ACE pilot, the 1950 computer. That's what these all are, and, and what we want is we want the iPhone, okay? Now, to get to the iPhone from here, we, this is when we need company in innovation because you don't, not, there's not an entrepreneur that created the iPhone from the ACE pilot. What happened is integrated circuits were created. Then a trillion entrepreneurs jumped in. We ended up with the iPhone. What's the integrated circuit of brain machine interfaces? There's a few candidates, uh, and you never quite know at the time, but what the Neuralink team seems to think is that the main thing we need is we need uh, bandwidth increase. We need something, but right, you know, right now the Moore's Law and this, if you say you know, Moore's Law every 18 months or so, the number of, uh, of transistors that can fit on a, on a chip doubles. Well, here it's about the number of uh, neurons you can interface with, the number uh, doubles about every seven years. It's not long enough. I mean, it's not short enough. That's too long a period to create a revolution. So decreasing the Moore's law of brain machine interfaces from seven years to something more like two years, um, where suddenly, oh wow, we, you know, we, we created this new way to interface with neurons and, and, and all this technology now is pouring in and soon you know, that, that number is up to 1,000 neurons and then 5,000 and then 100,000 and it's happening quickly. That's, I think, the number one challenge. That's what they seem to think is the number one challenge. And then the second challenge, they said, is kind of second place there, is invasiveness. You're not going to have um, billions of people going in for skull opening surgery. Okay? They need to come up with a, a, a clever way to do this, where it's almost like LASIK surgery. You go in, so you don't even need a surgeon. It's this automated procedure. It's just easy. It's safe. Uh, and so they, they need to create this kind of very, very high tech interface that can go in easily and interface with a ton of neurons. If they can do that, they think that that's the match that the entire Industry pours in, and suddenly that interface now becomes a whole brain interface, and they've achieved their goal.